In this update, we've got a concerning hurricane starting to develop in the Atlantic. So we're going to break down the details for you in this update. Take a look at the big picture this morning across the Atlantic Basin on the precipital water. Let's take a look at this. This is actually what was Hurricane Idalia. That's near Nova Scotia as a post-tropical type system. And now we're all eyes are concerned across the Atlantic Basin with these deep purple features showing up across into the Atlantic. And there's an, actually another one that just came off the coast of Africa. These are the systems that we're going to be concerned about going forward as we're going into the heart of hurricane season. If you take a look at the satellite picture and what we're worried about, there's the remnants of Vidalia. There is the remnants of Gert and Katia, but with these are the areas that we're concerned about. This blob that's already starting to show some deep reds associated with it. This is the main one we're gonna be watching over the next seven to 10 days. And then the one behind it as well. So that also has a favorable environment that could develop. And then you look at that folks, we have another formidable wave coming off the coast of Africa. So you can tell it gets busy. And now what's concerning is, look at the runway it has to work with. There's not really much to stop this system once it gets going and starts west west northwest bound and i'll show you these details and this is the setup going forward right now we've got this kind of ridging over the top right so this all systems go once this thing develops this is going to continue westbound west northwest bound there's not really much to stop this and it gets all the way into the islands towards around day seven and a lot of the guidance continues to track this west northwestward so we're going to be breaking down the details in this video. So if you are new to the channel and, and like detailed weather updates, hit the subscribe button and you're in. You get all my daily content on this channel. And I also would love to hit 200,000 subscribers by the end of the year so you can help me get there by subscribing to the channel and following all my content. And we're gonna be breaking down the updates on this channel and let's take a look at the setup right now from the, the national hurricane center it's about 90 percent guys this is likely going to be named today it will actually take the name lee and then there's the other one that's also looking to form as well these two systems will be likely dissipating over the days to come but yes this is the system that will continue westbound look where the system's at by the time we head into say day seven time frame it's just kind of north of the islands there, but gets dangerously close to Puerto Rico. And all systems go right now within two portions of the Bahamas. Need to be keeping on high alert uh, from this system. Now, one of the things that was kind of inhibiting storms, at least in the beginning of the season, was the Saharan dust. And right now, at least the last week or two, that has greatly subsided. So that definitely opens the door that's really concerning now that we're going into peak hurricane season which is not that far off it goes next you know this week september the 10th is actually the peak meaning we still got about 60 percent this is the heart of the season between now and like the middle of october that is your peak time that's when the busiest time is so this is definitely concerning we've gone into a lot a lot more favorable type setup for these storms to really develop and the first one is the lack of saharan dust into the atlantic basin the second one is the well above average sea surface anomalies not just coming off the coast of africa but well into the caribbean well into the gulf of mexico look what ideally it really didn't phase the gulf of mexico really not that much the one that actually did phase it was Franklin because member Franklin was just kind of sitting and spinning and took its sweet time and turned up all the uh, waters and caused a lot of upwelling. So that was actually somewhat of a good thing out there and actually brought up some of those colder waters deep down below to the surface. But nonetheless, you can see where this system is going to go over the next seven to 10 days. It's got the deepest reds and it's got the warmest waters to associate it with it. So there's plenty of fuel to fuel Lee once it starts to develop. And there's also a lack of wind shear as well. So that's pretty prevalent. What El Ninos are known for is a lot of wind shear. And so this is kind of the opposite of what you would see with a much more favorable environment with a lack of wind shear at least in the short term over the next seven to 10 days, 
all these greens on the map is where where uh, Lee would likely go. That's a favorable environment, folks. So we've got a lot of guidance coming together and say, hey, this is likely going to be a formidable storm. And so if we take a look at you know all the model guidance, you know, right now and kind of combine them all. This is what you have, and it's pretty compact, right? I mean, it's the saying, hey, we got all the models saying, hey, this thing is, once it has a low level center and once it gets named, it's gonna continue west, northwest bound with that ridging high pressure, you know, over the top there. And that would likely take it towards the, the, the uh, Leeward Islands there, just north of there possibly by day seven. And like, yes, get dangerously close to Puerto Rico probably getting a lot of high swells across those regions and then there's the Bahamas so and of course there's the United States so we're going to be tracking the details and the subtle differences but also what's also concerning is the the strength of this system and the model intensity at least what it's putting out right now and most guidance once this thing forms has it rapidly developing into a hurricane if not a major hurricane this is day four, day five. So we could be looking at a hurricane, if not on the cusp of a major hurricane, five days from now, or you know, likely six days from now. But most guidance, at least 50% of the models now, actually show, hey, this thing could rapidly intensify to a major hurricane and have another major hurricane, you know, on our hands. And that would, you know, you look, you know, what's also concerning is the ensembles, right? So let's take a look at the ensembles of the European and kind of show you the differences right now in the global guidances between the, uh, the, the European as well as the GFS on the ensemble front. So the European is pretty tight, right? And look at that. That's all, all members on board and saying, hey, it's got a pretty defined cone that's going to be basically you know going north of the islands there just north of puerto rico and on the cusp of the bahamas and look at some of these members here take it down to a 933 there's like a 920 in there that mean there's some of these are very low right so some of these are in the you know category three four you know range and so yes we talked about this uh a little bit about a weaker system would tend to keep it further west and if we look at the GFS it's a little bit more spread right we have a little bit more spread associated with it and you can see the numbers right 996 1003 1005 980 has a much a little bit weaker system what do you see that's a weaker system tends to trend these systems further west so if this scenario would likely play out then yes, it would definitely put more of the, the islands into play. It would definitely put more of Puerto Rico and, and the Dominican Republic and, and also the Bahamas, you know, Turks and Caicos areas. It would put all those areas into play. But you can see the stronger ensembles, right? The stronger ones, 963, 968. Yes, likely takes it a little bit further north and brings it more of a curve. And that typically what you see in these, these hurricane intensities, a stronger system faster tends to lift further northward and a weaker system tends to travel further westbound. So we'll be tracking this system, especially the intensity. And I think the speed will play a key role in this systems because likely where ridgings is gonna be likely placed over the United States and that's what we're going to be breaking down right now so here's the setup going forward most guidance this is day nine right most guidance between the GFS and the the, the ensembles all agree for the European that it's likely going to be somewhere within this vicinity by day nine right now the latest track puts it about 939 that would be a hot category three if not almost a category four hurricane and so the difference is look where the high pressure is right so the high pressure is locked over a good part of portions of wisconsin and southern canada here and look where the gfs is currently right now has a little bit faster system a tad bit faster system would actually push it further further you know be further further along into puerto rico the one thing about the the latest european is it tends to kind of slow down once it gets towards the islands and towards uh, Puerto Rico time. So that's going to be a per pretty significant feature and how that's going to play out for the United States. Because if the GFS is right, 
it can actually push it a little bit closer so this is by day 10 on the european so look, notice where the ridge is right so notice the placement with the stalling feature the ridge is actually back it's off it's off to the west and it's not leading this this system right but look at the difference on the gfs the faster system the ridge is ahead of this system so that allows it to sneak underneath right so it all depends on the actual speed of the system would be where this ridging would be likely by in the longer term we're talking you know like 10 days from now but that's pretty that's pretty significant right that's a big difference and because if the gfs is right it would allow this system to sneak underneath right the ridging is to the right of the system it would be ahead of the system of this a hurricane and that would allow this system to sneak underneath and likely could be impacted anywhere from north carolina all the way to maine if this scenario would play out so yes you know right now it's a long ways out so we're just showing you the differences and some of the global model guidances the, the subtle differences and right now it depends on the exact speed of the system and then of course the speed would place where the ridging would likely be around that day nine day ten time frame and if it's a faster system a little bit weaker then it tends to travel further west and, and then that would put you know the united states more into play so this is why we're updating you in this so don't take your guard you know guard down say hey it's definitely a fish storm it's going out to sea not every scenario says that right so we got to watch this system going forward greatly because right now nothing to be greatly concerned about but i would keep all my eyes especially this channel from north carolina to maine from this system in the extended range but what we can all agree on the placement where it's likely going to be by like by you know day nine time frame and it would cause a lot of swells you got 65 foot waves out here across into the center but it's close enough to bring high swells into puerto rico into the islands here back into the Dominican republic back into the bahamas so you're going to get some large swells and even into across the eastern seaboard it's going to be close enough even by then you're going to be getting some large larger swells offshore so here's the placement let's break this thing down for you so here's around the 210 you know hour time frame so this depends on the speed of this system this would be your hurricane lee and this is the placement where the ridging would be in the in the trough coming in off off the northeast and the difference is is pretty greatly on the gfs it actually again it speeds the system up puts this ridging a little bit further it has more northwest flow associated with it. it has this area across the middle of the country a, a tad bit colder than than what the what the european would imply so that's basically the, the subtle differences and the breakdown from the week to week so let's break down for the united states for you so here we are you know going in this is labor day for this week we've got you know pretty big heat dome across a good part of the country especially across the south we've got a lot of record temperatures probably likely to be unfolding again this week especially thursday and friday further south but we do have a pretty significant trough that's coming in from the pacific northwest but most of the areas across the middle of the country and even northern canada is going to be pretty hot and pretty dry for the south so with the ridging in place you've got a lot of below average precipitation for you know a good part of the country it's really just where these troughs are going to be and it's all elongated along the northern periphery there are northern states going into idaho into montana going into you know wyoming into the dakotas and that would sneak across into wisconsin and go through go through um you know michigan here where, where the rest of the countries you know fairly on the on the drier side but things you know definitely change going into next week so pretty significant this would be the 12th through the 19th time frame most guidance at least on the ensemble front right now has this backing off the, the high pressure that's been locked so so much so long over a good part of the summer finally looks to start the beginning stages of trying to retreat back into mexico that would allow a little bit more northwest flow to set in right so that's why the gfs is pretty bullish in the middle of the country but even the european is likely is trying to trend there and we would have more of a northwest flow type setup 
and look where the, uh, the you know the instability would likely fall along the east coast and that's when we have to look on where potentially lee could be maybe possibly close enough to have impacts towards you know the east coast right so but on the precipitation front look where look where all, a lot of the precipitation would likely fall in the middle of the country with more of a northwest flow the backing off of the ridge would back off into mexico that would allow more northwest flow to sneak out in the picture and that northwest flow is a wetter flow it's a cooler flow right so you would have above average rains through the dakotas through Kansas, through Oklahoma, and even parts of Northern Texas, and even portions of extreme North Texas, right? That would be a significant change of what you've seen a lot of summer long. And of course, we'll have to watch where the, you know, the ultimate placement and the speed of the ridge uh, where would placement where Lee would likely end up for the Northeast. So we'll be fine tuning that you know, on this channel. So guys, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Uh, do like this video, definitely hit the subscribe button and catch me next update. Why I protect you before and after the storm.